Hi guys, um, welcome to another chapter from my book, Graceful Thoughts. It is the last one now to record, and it's just the one that's the title of the book, and it's called Graceful Thoughts. Just to give a bit of context, this book was written in around 2018 when I started writing this up to 2020, I think when it when it sort of came in, into being. It was a long process, tested all of my confidence and everything about me with my new spiritual development as I moved and transitioned from being in the prison service to working through um, the various different jobs and careers that I've had then and since. But the majority of the things that come through still illustrate my reading processes, my writing and the work and research that I do. And all part of this is still as important today as it was then is about how I clear my head when I go out with my dogs, which is where most of the inspiration comes from and where I draw most of my strength from in times of stress or trouble. So I give you graceful thoughts. I love my morning walk with my dogs and I'm often inspired by nature. I vary my route around the local woods so I can see all aspects of them. My focus as I walked round today was on the swans and their habits. Over the years I have counted many swans and watched as they go through the changing seasons evolving from cygnets to the adult swans that are a beautiful sight to behold. Over the years it seems there are less and less stain around this area so it's no real surprise when I counted just two together. This elegant looking pair were out in a freezing environment and were eagerly, eagerly foraging for food. However, this food was relatively short in supply, as much of the lake was iced over, making it difficult to access. I stopped and observed for a while. There is an adage about swans that I particularly like, and that is that the swan is graceful on the top while paddling like mad underneath. How does this translate to everyday life? Well, let me explain. All things being equal, a swan has the appearance that everything is gliding along. It doesn't show the work that it is doing to make this appearance a reality. The swans that I observed were in a relatively small area and not precisely by size but by the obstructions. On their way they were surrounded by stable icy patches. They couldn't come and go as they pleased because of the restrictions to access food. So plan B was needed. I watched the swan intently as it surve surveyed its surroundings. There was people on the bank and they were throwing bread into the water for the swans to feed. However, to access the food, the swan would somehow have to navigate its way over the ice to reach a patch of water to get its reward. Under normal circumstances, it would just glide along, along the water, feed, stretch it, and then return to its normal, its normal normality. The swan hoisted itself out of the water and onto a patch of ice, and warily tested the surface to see if it would support its weight. In some places it did, and others not so. I could sense the swan's discomfort as it struggled to get a foothold on the ice, but it managed it all while keeping its focus on its food reward. It was nearly there, then the ice broke, and the swan splashed into the water. It was now back in a place of comfort, something it knew. It moved freely in this area, however progress was being made to reach the food. It had yet again come out of its comfort zone and crossed another patch of ice. Having learnt lessons from the previous pa patch of ice, it began the tentative process of getting out of the water again. This time it slipped and slid towards the next patch of water, finding its food source and claiming its breakfast. After a good feed, it reversed the process and ended up back in its comfort zone of the water. The whole process only took a couple of minutes, but it was enough to draw parallels with the human condition. The majority of the time we are in our environment or comfort zone, we can set goals and achieve them without really thinking of the effort that has been put in to make these achievements possible. The outer or surface appearance is composed and together there is no need to look beyond that, as life has a habit of doing a change of circumstances may well be thrown at us. We are then made to step out of our comfort zone as the natural environment has been changed. We are no longer familiar with our surroundings. Life must carry on. A period of new assessment is needed. 
Now we have to look at the amount of effort we need to make our goals into a reality. We need to look below the surface, what it takes to make things look comfortable again and how we will apply all this while being in an unfamiliar and uncomfortable place. I look at this way, progress is progress no matter how small the steps. So I keep so keeping the focus on the result is key to making that progress. Look around you. Is there anything of familiarity that can help you through this period of change? Is there anything we know we are naturally good at? Now we have a starting point. Take your first faltering steps. Step bravely into the unknown. Pause if necessary. Reassess things. Reassure yourself that you're making progress. Remember that you are continually learning new lessons. Keeping the end goal in mind should help you start to notice you are navigating the icy patches of life. At times, know that you may even fall through them, but that's life. Eventually, we learn, make progress and take the steps towards our rewards. We can then collect our feed. And then it's time to turn back to what we know and reflect on the actions taken to move us forward. The journey itself may well have been challenging, but the destination was the reward. As we look at life, we can take a lot from our journeys if we take the time to look. Both successes and the slips through the ice can be equally inspiring. Each journey we take, we return wiser and more prepared for the next one. We can and do adapt to all circumstances and we survive. Knowing that the smallest steps can often be the things that make the most significant difference is enough to keep me striving. My message to you all as I leave these jottings is to keep going. Keep striving for better. Step out of your comfort zone because I believe success is within our grasp if we put in the work. Be graceful on the surface and paddle like buggery underneath. You are your biggest asset, so invest wisely in yourself. Good luck in your quests and happy gliding. And I want to figure out, uh, finish off by telling you graceful thoughts written a few years ago. I talk a lot when people talk to me about being honest and down to earth and giving things as they are. I am not a professional filmmaker, so during this, while I'm filming this and reading, my dog was actually showing off in front of me and racing around. So she was having her part in there, and just to illustrate that it's it, it's great in the changing moments of time where we'll go out of one mood and into another. And as I said at the beginning, my dogs are a massive part of my life. So I'm not editing this video. It will be what it will be in the background. So as I said there, thank you for watching. Hopefully everything goes the way that you need it to be. Stretch yourself because you never know where you're going to end up. So keep smiling, keep shining and happy gliding. And thanks for watching.